Gender, never heard of her. By one moon, one spirit. Here's the summary. Izuku understands the concept of gender, but at the same time, he doesn't. Like, he understands that people feel like a boy or a girl, or neither sometimes. But why does everything seem to revolve around his gender? He just wants to buy some clothes without being questioned about it. Um, there are some trigger warnings in the notes. Um, it's a tea slur. Um, so if you don't want to listen to that, um, skip. Um, he's a big crybaby already. To the extra explains like it's obvious. And I have no fucking clue what to, but the only dolls Deku plays with. Um, I will try and like put those as like separate sections so you can skip them. But I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. So we'll see. Izuku understands the concept of gender, but at the same time, doesn't. Like, he understands that people feel like a boy, or a girl, or neither, sometimes. But why does everything seem to revolve around his gender? He just wanted to buy some clothes, without being questioned about it. Like, the one time when he was six, in mid-July. He saw a pro hero wearing a skirt beating a villain on TV. She laughed about how her skirt cooled her down. So, so the villain's heat quirk didn't affect her that much. Mom, Izuku called, bouncing around excitedly. Inko enters the living room from the kitchen. What is it, sweetie? she asked. Mom, I want a skirt. Just like the hero on TV, Izuku shouts, waving towards the TV. Oh, but skirts are for girls. You're a boy, Inko sighs, a small frown on her face. But I want to be a hero, and the hero has a skirt. Plus, she says it cools her down, and my shorts aren't cool enough in this heat, Izuku pouts. How about we get you some better shorts, then? And, if you really want a skirt, I'll get you one. Just one, though. Inko compromised. Yay! Izuku's 100-watt smile lit up the home once more as he hurried off to get ready to go shopping. After they got home, Izuku ran up to his room, excited to wear the emerald green skirt he got. It was longer than the hero has, going down to his knees, but that's fine with him. He never really liked showing too much skin. It gives him more chances of getting nastier scrapes or bruises. He shut his shorts and struggled for a moment, getting the new skirt on. Once he dressed again, he made his way outside, wanting to try it out. And see how Kachan thinks of it. Kachan! Look, look! Isuku calls, running towards the boy and his little gang in a nearby playground. Deku, what the fuck are you wearing? Bakugo questions, not even hesitating with the swears. It's a skirt! A hero said on TV that it cools you down. Also, don't swear, Kachan, that's bad. Izuku gushed out. I do what I want, Bakugo defends, crossing his arms. Deku, that's for girls only. What are you, a little sissy? Some extra sneers. The fuck are you talking about? Deku's an only child. He's not a sister, Bakugo defends, not at all understanding the insult. I know that, but he's a sissy. 
He's wearing girls' clothes as a boy, which means he probably likes to play dolls. I mean, he's a big crybaby already. He's probably one of those I heard my mommy talk about. The extra explains like it's obvious. I have no fucking clue what a is, but the only dolls Deku plays with is with hero ones. Deku is a crybaby because he's a Deku, not because he's a girl or some shit. My mom doesn't cry and she's a girl. I don't give a shit about what Deku wears as long as it doesn't make him any more useless. So, shut the fuck up before I blow you up. Bakugo threatens the extra. The extra let out a small squeak before nodding their head. Bakugo scoffs. Turning around to Izuku, who has tears in his eyes. Don't fucking cry now, Deku. I wanted to go check out the new All Might figure today, not deal with your ass. Bakugo states, glaring at Izuku. Caught on! You do like my skirt! I knew it! You're so cool! Thank you for standing up for me. Izuku jumps over to Bakugo to give him a hug. Only to be shoved away half-heartedly. Shut up. I don't care about your shitty rag of a skirt. Let's just get going. Bakugo shouts, marching off. If Izuku felt cooler in the skirt, loving the way and the way it twirls and twists around him, well, that's only for him to know. Izuku is 15 now, attending the hero course. His lifelong dream. He got a quirk from All Might. He's on a straight path towards being a pro hero. How cool is he? Oh gosh, where did I draw my glasses? An old woman mumbled, bending down to try and grab her glasses. Here they are, Izuku said, grabbing the glasses from the floor and handing them back to the old lady. Oh, thank you so much. Such a nice young lady. I hope you have a great day, dear. The old lady gives her gratitude before putting back on her glasses. No problem. Have a good day, too. Izuku walked back towards his group of friends, which consists of Sue, Uraraka, Ida, and Todoroki. Izuku tilts his head at the weird looks both Ida and Uraraka were giving him. What's wrong? he inquired. Well, you didn't correct the old lady when she called you a woman, Uraraka pointed out. Izuku just shrugs. It doesn't matter, does it? She was thanking me for helping her. That's all that matters, right? I suppose... Ida trails off. Sharing a look with Uraraka. Before the awkward tension thickens, Todoroki pointed out a soba shop, which causes Sue to drag them along to the shop, breaking the tension. Izuku brushes his interaction off. He had better things to do, like training, so he can master his quirk. Not to worry why his friends got confused about why he didn't prefer being mask or femme like they do. It's normal not to focus on those things, right? Yeah, it's normal for him to not have a strong preference. It's like having types, but with himself, and people already know he doesn't really have a type. That's how things work, surely. It was a few minutes before class began when Izuku burst in. Heading to his seat, he plops down and turns to face Shinso, a little out of breath. Good morning, Shinso-kun, he greeted. Hey, are you wearing makeup? Shinso asks, looking at Izuku. Oh, yeah, I was just going to do some contour to hide the bags I have because I didn't sleep well last night and decided, hey... What if I did my whole face? So, that led me to sharpening my jawline and then putting on some eyeliner to frame my eyes more and make me look more soft to contrast with the contour. 
Then I put on a light blush and highlights to make my freckles pop, you know? Then I just quickly did my eyelashes and put on my black lipstick to match my black eyeliner. So, yeah, I rushed a little bit at the end, but does it still look good? Izuku rambles out, drawing Shinso a little bit. Oh, um, yeah, you look good. Pretty, too. Shinso stutters out, examining the rest of Izuku. He notices the small metal black flower clip-on earrings he has to the black and gold ring he has. And, wait, is that a claw ring? Where did you find that? Hmm? This? Izuku raises his hand so the black claw ring with an emerald accent on it was on full view. I bought a few of these on the internet. They were on sale, too, he said. Hmm? This? Izuku raises his hand so the black claw ring with emerald accents on it was on full view. I bought a few of these on the internet. They were on sale, too, he said. You look good, Modoria. You should teach me how to do makeup as well as you do, Kero, Sue said, materializing out of nowhere. Yeah, dude, you're making me jealous at how well you're rocking that eyeliner, Kirishima calls out a few rows down, doing his signature fist bump with his hands. Todoroki came up, nodding. You are very beautiful, babe. Izuku covers his blush in his arms while the class either squeals or groans. Aizawa walked in, sending everyone back to their desks as class began. Izuku ignores the weird looks from some of his classmates, deciding to focus on schoolwork. He has a lot to do. He has to keep up with the others. Deku, why'd you put on makeup? Araraka asks during lunch, once the squad is seated. Oh, I was just putting contour on my eye bags from my lack of sleep last night and decided that I might as well do the rest of my face, Izuku explains with his usual cheery attitude. Midoriya, you should be getting a full ten hour. Does it feel a bit strange, though, wearing makeup as a guy and all? Uraraka said, derailing Ida's rant. Uraraka, please don't interrupt me when I'm trying to. Oh, not at all, really. In fact, it makes me feel pretty. Izuku answers, while Ida gives an exasperated gasp in the background. Hey, this isn't very good behavior for future heroes. You're very pretty, Izuku-kun. Todoroki cuts off Ida once more leaving behind a sulking Ida with Sue patting his shoulders comfortingly. Ha! Huh. I always took you as a mask sort of guy, not a femme one, Uraraka mutters, taking a mouthful of her food. I... I don't really have a preference, really. Izuku responds, tilting his head a little. So... You don't care if you're seen as a phantom guy? Ida asks, getting a hold of himself and focusing back into the conversation. I don't really care that much, I guess. Izuku mumbles with a small shrug of his shoulders. But what do you want to present as? Uraraka pressed. Izuku creases his brow in confusion. I don't understand. I didn't really think about that stuff, so... I think what they're trying to say is if you want to be seen as a boy, a girl, or something else. What do you want? Todoroki explains carefully. Izuku let out a long, angry sigh. All I want to do is be a hero. I don't care if I'm a boy or a girl or something. I just want to save people and wear clothes and do whatever. Why do I need to put labels and discover what my gender is when I literally don't give a fuck?
The squad flinches back with wide eyes, not yet used to hearing Izuku square. Ida lifts his arm to begin a lecture, being stopped by Sue with a quick glare. Izuku huffs and digs into his food with a bit too much aggression. You don't need to tell people anything, nor use any labels if you don't want to, Kero. Sue said, Sue said, cutting through the tension. Yeah, sorry for pushing you. I just didn't know, I guess, and was curious. It wasn't any of my business, but I pressed anyway. Sorry. Ura Araka apologized, bowing her head a little. It shouldn't matter either. You don't know anyone anyways. I will still love you no matter what, because you're my partner. Todoroki gives a small smile, moving closer to Izuku. I apologize too. It wasn't any of my business, but I questioned it anyway. As an aspiring hero, I should be more aware of that and my actions toward others. Just because I'm meddling where I don't have to is a sense of being a hero. Sometimes you shouldn't, especially if you aren't welcome at all. So I am... Ida, it's okay. I accept your apology. You too, Uraraka-kun. Izuku smiles warmly at them, turning back to his food with less aggression than before. They smile back at him, finally beginning to eat their lunch. As the weather became warmer, the pants in the boys' uniform became more and more uncomfortable to wear. Izuku is one Bakugo's rant about how I nearly let loose an explosion from my asshole for the amount of sweat they're away from committing public indecency. Thus, Izuku found himself in the teacher's lounge, searching for Aizawa Sensei underneath one of the tables. Hey there, Aizawa Sensei. I have a request to make, Izuku said to the previously sleeping man. Aizawa groans. I swear to God, unless someone is dead or dying, I will. Kill me in my sleep? Yeah, I understand. Anyway, I have a request to make, Isiku says with way too much cheer. I want to have a skirt for my uniform, if that's okay. Izuku stares at Izuku for a moment before sighing. Okay, is there anything else, like pronouns or name changes? Yue was willing to provide anything for trans. The explanation was cut off with a loud groan. I literally don't give a fu- A damn. I just want to get a skirt so I don't drench my pants with sweat. So put whatever you want for pronouns or something. Or don't do it at all. Just let me know where I can get the skirt. And so you can go back to sleeping. Izuku snaps getting really tired of this confusion. It was normal to not care about my gender, right? It doesn't matter, so why does everyone think it does? He thought angrily. Azawa blinks, taken aback from the soft smoking boy raising his voice. At him, no less. Sure, just let me know your measurements so I can get you a couple, he said with a bored tone to hide his confusion and mild concern. Izuku gives a small smile. Thanks. I'll leave the notes on top of your hidey hole. See you later, Azawa sensei Azawa sighs, curling back up to try and get another full REM cycle. Problem child. Izuku walked into the classroom with a little bit more bounce in his step. It was his first day wearing the skirt he asked Aizawa to get him, and he already felt a hundred times cooler and less sweaty than he would be. He slipped into a seat, greeting the boy in front of him. Tch, whatever, nerd. Just don't flash people like you did when we were seven. 
Bakugo gave his own gruff greeting. Kachan, we were seven! Izuku gasped, giving the blonde a half-hearted glare. Whoa, I don't know you wanted to wear the skirts, Midoriya. Denki came up to Izuku, leaning onto his desk. Oh, yeah, it's getting hot outside, and skirts have always helped me deal with the heat. Izuku explained casually. Denki was surprised because boys rarely wear skirts, not because it was weird, just uncommon, Izuku said to himself. Yeah, most boys don't usually wear skirts, especially not with their uniforms, unless they were not a boy. Denki trails off, almost like he was asking a question. Huh? Oh, I guess, but... It's getting hot out, so... Izuku is getting uncomfortable. Why is this such a big deal? Shut up, Dunsface. Deku has been doing this shit since we were kids. It's nothing new, and it means nothing, dumbass. Bakugo snaps, sending a glare to Denki. Yep, yep, okay, sorry. Denki apologizes quickly, backing off. Sorry for what? Izuku asks quietly, to which no one hears due to the loud chaos of the classroom. Izuku curls into himself a little, his stomach, his stomach nodding up with dread. Even talking with Sue and Shoto about shopping together with Fumi, he, he can't shake off the feeling. The feeling of being abnormal. Monoma is on his bullshit again. Everyone in a five male radius can hear his gremlin ass crackling about being better than those class 1A bastards, only going silent for a brief moment to say something to someone. Oh, yeah, nice skirt, Midoriya. It looks nice on you. In a normal, calm voice before Continuing with, uh, but that doesn't mean you're better than us when B will destroy you anyway. Izuku chokes on his food, trying to take a breath of air between his laughter and his choking. After Ida helps Izuku breathe again, Shoto stares at Monoma and deadpans. How dare you find my boyfriend attractive? That's only for me to see, because we're dating. That means no one else can see his beauty, apparently. He then turns around at Uraraka and asks, Did I do the possessive boy thing right? The entire table broke out in an uncontrollable fits of laughter. Even Monoma stops his rant with a wheezing laugh. And then Kendo snapped my neck again and dragged me off before Bakugo could be at my ankles. Monoma finished the normal lunch chaos to me, who was busy working on their babies, to see the beauty of Monoma's chaos. Why do you say Kendo snaps your neck whenever they knock you out? Shinso asks, looking up from his future version of a Nintendo Switch. It's funnier that way. Monoma did a small shrug with a grin on his face. Izuku, Monoma, and Shinso were sitting on various beanbag chairs in the corner of May's workshop area. May is at her workbench, fiddling around with whatever baby they were trying to make. Izuku trues on the straw of the boba tea he was drinking, trying to figure out the best way to bring up the issue that has been troubling him these past few days. Midoriya, what's going on in that big brain of yours? Shinso asks, staring at him with mild curiosity. Oh, nothing. Something. It's just... Something's been bothering me lately is all. Izuku mutters, looking at his shoes with great interest. They all waited patiently. 
Even May stopped doing whatever witchcraft she was trying to pull off. It's just... Is it normal for you to not care about your gender? He finally says, looking up at them. Fuck yeah, fuck gender. That shit's a social construct, and society is centered around a patriarchy, and we need no man telling us how to feel. May screams out before the other two can say anything. You think I can make my babies while caring if I'm the mother or the father? Fuck no. The only thing I need is some materials and the fear God has for me. May says before cackling like a maniac. Yeah, everyone feels gender differently, so it's fine if you're apathetic about it. Shinso follows up, getting his bearings back faster than Monoma. Were there that be from general exposure to May or from being too sleep deprived to care is up for debate. Aw, thank you guys. Izuku chokes out between his tears of happiness. The others merely give him a comforting pat on his back or head while saying assurance. Izuku stands at the front of the common room. Izuku stands at the front of the common room with his classmates strewn out on the f floor or couches. Nerd, why the fuck do you call us here? I was supposed to be using shitty hair as a breathing punching bag right now. Bakugo growls out while Kirishima gives him a bro what the fuck stare. Izuku takes a deep breath before he starts his speech. I want to say this before any rumors or misunderstandings happen. First, I'm not trans or cis really. I don't care about my gender whatsoever. My brain only be cares about becoming a hero and gender isn't on my list of priorities. Second, I don't care what you prefer to me as I don't care. Everyone was silent for a moment before Denki asks a question. So, does that mean you can piss in both washrooms now? Well, yes. No. Yes? I think I will only do it to make the transphobes mad and to state my need to be spiteful, petty bitch for my inner conchon. Your inner what now? Bakugo barks out, glaring at Izuku. Izuku lets out a squeak before dashing off, saying some random excuse. Bokugo gives chase after her, yelling out inaudible threats. I love how well my date mate and my best friend get along, Todoroki says sincerely, with a small smile on his face, while screams and explosions happen in the background. What a mad banquet of darkness. Tokoyami mutters, with dark shadow nodding along with him.